um, a 2009 Knoxville murder of a woman found dead in her car remains unsolved. Knoxville police are still hopeful that new information could help detectives close an unsolved murder case of a woman found dead in her car 15 years ago. On February the 8th, 2009, investigators found 23-year-old Gina Thacker shot dead in her car at an apartment complex on Valley View Drive in North Knoxville. Knoxville police say that she had no known connections to the apartment. Investigators determined that on the night of her murder, Thacker left Spicy's which is now called the Wild Boar Tavern, off of Emory Road. She left there at around 2 a.m., and according to the police, her body was found two hours later. In 2020, Knoxville police said that the evidence at the scene suggests that there was likely a robbery. A green purse strap was found in the parking lot just outside of her driver's side door which police say points to some type of struggle. Investigators said there may have been someone with her. The passenger seat in the car was reclined, and the department shared that they found drug paraphernalia under the seat during their investigation. Investigators searched the area, including dumpsters and the woods in the surrounding area, but they never found her phone or her purse. Little evidence was found at the scene. Knoxville police released that there were no cameras at the complex. No witnesses came forward and only a few fingerprints were found in the car. All those belonged to Thacker or first responders. Knoxville police said that there have not been any significant developments in her case, but they are st still searching for information. The case remains open and unsolved. Any information whatsoever that could assist is appreciated. You can contact East Tennessee Crime Stoppers at 1-865-215-7317. Sounds like maybe she gave someone a ride from the bar that night. I wonder if police went back to that place and spoke to people who were there. I don't know the details about that. I'm looking for some more links about her. But I wonder if they went and talked to anyone who was at the bar that night who saw if she may have left with someone. It's possible that she may have been asked to give someone a ride. And they may have told her that they lived in that apartment complex. They may not have. She may have pulled in there and that's when they decided to try to rob her. Um, that's a possibility. So I would ask if anyone in the, who attended the bar that night, you know, remembered seeing her talking to anybody or knew anybody that she may have, you know, come in there with from time to time. This is another, this is from WBIR.com. In 2009, the 23-year-old was gunned down in a parking lot. Her mother isn't giving up hope that one day her killer will face justice. Her daughter had been gone a year when Gina's mother decided to sit down for an interview. Our world is not the same since Gina was taken. Nothing has been the same. Thacker had just lost her husband a year before. Describing the loss of her only daughter is difficult. It's pain she has lived with daily, she says. She tries to hold on to bright memories of her daughter. Gina was as beautiful on the inside as she was on the outside. In the early morning hours of February the 8th, 2009, the beautiful 23-year-old with a heart for helping others was shot and killed. We need a break in this case, said investigator Jeff Day. Homicide teams established a timeline. After leaving her waitressing shift at the Emory Road Shoney's, 
Gina went home where she lived with her boyfriend off of Pedago Road. She then headed out alone to a bar called Spicy's. She left there at 2 a.m. and she left alone, they said. Now, this was according to witnesses. I don't believe she was ever seen after that. Two hours later, Gina was shot dead in her car. So she leaves this restaurant, this bar, at 2 o'clock in the morning. She's alone, according to others. And she ends up, two hours later, being found shot dead in the parking lot of a apartment complex that she did not live at. So what was her reason for going there? She'd, she'd been shot probably while she sat in the driver's seat. It appears that she was shot through an open door. Some people have asked the question if it's possible that she had gone there to buy drugs since drugs were found in the floor or drug paraphernalia was found in the car. Uh, I don't know what kind of paraphernalia it doesn't say. Um, the vehicle was parked at the Valley Oaks apartment complex off of Valley View Drive. Gina didn't know anyone who lived there. She was in a Toyota Corolla sitting in a parking space when you come into the parking lot. Investigators say there is a possibility that she may have had a passenger. The side seat was reclined back. Current evidence likely points to a robbery. There was a green purse strap in the parking lot, but her purse was missing. Um, it appears that she put up a fight and her cell phone must have been in her purse because it was also missing. Gina had credit cards in her purse, but her cell phone and her credit cards were never used. Well, this was 2009. Were they not able to try to ping her phone to try to pick up a location? With little to go on, the search for answers began immediately. We had about 30 people out the next day knocking on doors asking if anyone had seen anything. Cameras at the complex did not exist at that time. Dumpsters were searched. Um, Gina's family took their own steps, putting up a massive billboard off of I-640 towards Easttown Mall. It stayed there for years. It's a waiting game for investigators. While a mother wishes she could have her daughter back, there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss her with all of my heart. This is dated just a day or two after this took place. The Knoxville police determined that the death was definitely a homicide, but they do not have any suspects. Now, in this story, this police officer says that he believes that Gina was asleep and that she left her car window open. Now, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, how far did she live? I mean, is it, is it possible that she was intoxicated? She'd gone to this bar. She leaves this bar at 2 in the morning. On along her drive home, is it possible that she um, started to feel overwhelmed from being intoxicated? Maybe she passed a police officer. She was afraid she was going to get pulled over. So maybe she did pull into this parking lot just to try to sleep it off or, you know, wait until some time passed. She was able to drive home. Now, here's how she came to be found. Knox County Sheriff's Office Deputy David Gillette said that when he dropped some friends off at the apartment complex, he noticed that Gina appeared to be asleep and that her car window was open. He said he went to see if she was okay, and he, he saw that she had been shot, and he called 911 from his cell phone. So at this point, she was still alive. 
It says that she died later at the University of Tennessee Medical Center. Um, investigators are requesting that anyone come forward with any information. Now, this was posted in 2014. There was a $50,000 reward leading to information leading to the conviction of Jameis Killer. I'm sure that there has to be more, but this case currently stands as an unsolved case. I don't know if the boyfriend was questioned. I don't know if he had an alibi. And like I said, people's, people said that she left the bar alone. Maybe someone who lived in that complex or someone pulling in and out or going by on the roadway saw this young woman alone sitting in her car. Or maybe she did have her window down. Maybe she rolled her window down for someone who came up to her window to speak to her. If you if you know something about a case that I talk about that I might leave information out, I don't care at all for people to offer help on that. But I do appreciate all my uh, subscribers. I appreciate everyone who watches. And um, thanks for watching.